what's cooking <laughs> today it's time to hang out spend some time in this heritage month on city with some of the fishermen who you find at the Inshona by the seaside who work very hard here in Gamashi in Accra Ghana and today we're going to look at a very special fisherman's meal we call it Akulo and it's made from fresh fish and when I say fresh it's literally straight from the sea and it's cooked on the sea you don't even need to get to the shore it's made fresh on the sea and we add some gari sometimes they eat it with banku as well which they will carry from home which is prepared by their wives their family or they themselves who know the skill of banku making may make it and carry it in their bags along to sea of course palm oil muchu is also a very key part of this it's what gives the gari its yellowish golden reddish color when you're eating that claw and um, if you are going to use a sea salt the sea water you don't need salt but in case you had to do it on land like we most likely will be doing today we'll use some sea salt specifically um, adangu that's what we call it it's rock salt it has a crystal like feel to it it's not powdered like table salt or um, the powdered iodated salts that we are used to seeing in our homes and um, you know, you can find the rock salt that are down in the markets anyway, but these days it seems the powdered ones, the granulated salt as well, is more common. And we use different kinds of fish, straight from the fresh catch. There's odoi, there's redfish, there's snappers. Um, you can also have prawns, shrimps, basically any kind of seafood that is in the catch. You pick a whole bunch of it and they cook it on a coal pot with charcoal fresh fire in the open sea and that's what we have as a fisherman's meal and again we call it a claw and the last thing that makes the meal whole is freshly grinded pepper with tomatoes and onions and so we'll get into the preparation of the meal for now we're out here on the sea my brother here is mending his net Paucho, if I was saying Powerful <laughs> 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 So he says he's not, or he wasn't born in but he does work here in Accra. Uh, so, who papa is a fisherman? And he is a fishing well. So he says his father is a fisherman, so he learned it's, you know, bits and pieces of it. But he's working here in Accra now. Um, with a lot of the Gamashi fishermen. We did meet the chief fisherman earlier and we had to bow money. We had to let him or pay homage is what we say in English. Let him know that we were coming to his space and we gave him a bottle of Castle Bridge. And so we have permission to be in this space. Very important. My colleague Ayuke is smiling at me because he knows what he went through to get that Castle Bridge. And uh, when we get back to the shore, we'll make that claw. But Another thing this gentleman sitting next to me was saying was that these nets, they were made and was, he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a white man who made it, but we have our own way of working with it in our culture and as our heritage would, would stipulate and would, the story would tell. And so one of his key jobs here on sea and at the seashore, at the Inshona, is to mend the nets. The wear and tear that they go through as we're doing the fishing, he has the skill to mend them so that the fish don't fall through the nets when they are caught and we can still get them safely back to shore. They can be sold. The fish we get in our cold stores that end up in our freezers, we can get some of that fish and of course we can make things like a claw right on sea and right at the Inshona. <laughs> So 
So we're back at the seashore now. We're almost there and we're going to get into the preparation of our claw once we land. I'll be doing this with Kwesi who is a fisherman himself. He's very well versed in the art of fishing but also he knows how to make a mean pot, a mean meal when it comes to the art and culinary space of our claw. So once we dock, we'll get down and we'll get right into the preparation of our claw. We'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Benofiel <laughs> Well, she See water, Oh, 
Yeah, sure, nah. And dry one. No, I can not I'm going to to one. I'm going to you see fresh one. Fresh one. It should be more useful. It's money I can buy. It was cat. She saw a cat. Osana solo taste. Cat. Oh, you saw fresh one. I look at you saw dry one. Fantastice, <laughs> Mm. So right now what's happening is we are grounding the pepper which will be used to eat that claw or to make that claw. So he used dried peppers, dried chili peppers. I asked him why we don't use fresh ones. He said, oh, sometimes they do, but today they're using the dried ones. And they're also easier to travel with, to pack in your bag when you're going onto the sea to go and do fishing. He's chopped up some onions, they are red onions, and he's grinding them now in what the gas call ka. Other parts of the countries, we call it asanka or um, um, apotoriwa or agba, any of those. And then he's using the tapuli, the, the um, pistol. It's, it's called what in Ga? Uh, um, tapuli. Ato, ato. Ato, ato. So some people say tapuli. Here, right at the Nshona, Gamashi, Jamestown in Accra, we call it ato. So that's what's happening now. Meanwhile, the fish is being brought to a boil. 
So you saw earlier that they were cleaning the fresh fish that was brought straight from sea, cleaning some of it and putting it on fire. They added clean water to it, added a bit of salt as well. And now it's sitting on a coal pot. We've got some charcoal in there. It's burning nicely and it's boiling so I can cook very well. So that's where we are now with our color. So what are we doing? A minute of your admin. And I'm I'm working with me. So right now he's cutting the tomatoes into the pepper and the onions and bet So he's going to grind the tomatoes as well. Just a fresh traditional pepper. You know, the guys will say wong poshito. In a fifth Moka, lying near me, a me, I get power me, none is so to a so I was asking him if he liked to grind the pepper for it to be very smooth or if it should be chunky. And he says, oh, he's grinding it so I'll be very smooth and, you know, you, you enjoy the experience when you're eating it. But he says the earthenware bowl, which is what we call ka in ga, or again, asanka, potoriwa, ba, depending on the parts of the country you come from, the lines in it, the ridges that you see in the asanka, in the ka, in the earthenware bowl they're supposed to aid in grinding the food but this is one that's been used so many times on sea and so a lot of the lines have become smooth and so it's taking a little longer than usual for him to grind the pepper to become as smooth as we want it to be and if you're just joining us, what happened was that Kwesi and his colleague here at sea, they took some of the fish that they had brought in from sea, fresh. You don't get it like this unless you come to the Inshona, to the seaside. There are different kinds of fish there, red fish, what we call doe fish, lots of them. And they cut them up, cleaned it, and now it's on fire and it's boiling. They also added some salt. And again, I asked what kind of salt is used. They said if they were on sea, they would have used the seawater and since seawater is salt water that would have been sufficient but since we're here on the shore or on land we've had to use salt as a substitute for that and they've used what we call adango the rock salt the crystal salt and i'm sure we have images of that as well you can see it glistening better and more than ever so it's time for us to go for a break we're grinding our pepper getting ready to get to the almighty end of our almighty our claw here at our in shauna here in accra jamestown so let's go for this break and when we come back we continue my name is apioko this is still what's cooking right here on city tv City TV is live on DSTV. Go to channel 363. On Go TV, access City TV on channel 182. On a digital TV, please press the menu button on the remote control and run a new search on your TV. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV on your television. City TV can be accessed on a free to air digital box like the Go TV and Star Times box. City TV, it's your world. So, our fish is ready now, and it's time to move on to the next step of making a kolo, which is more or less a fisherman's meal here in Accra at Inshon or by the seaside. So, Kwesi, you'll find it. Yeah, and a kolo egg be. It will, you know, I'll be on it. Be on it, what for Gary Agbeni? No, no, I miss Gary, okay, for a mutual miss or Gary. No, I can't miss Gary. 
So he's pouring the gari into a bowl, as you can see. And for those who don't know what gari is, it's dried cassava flakes. And then it's toasted nicely in a pan or some would say fried or sauteed, however you want to put it. But it goes through some heat process. And um, they're adding palm oil, what we call muchu in Ga. Others may call it zomi, in red oil, but palm oil. Okay, so you're mixing that gari with a with a palm oil with a red oil. Ewo gari e te wata ni efe te. No, wata ni oka mutule e misile. No, ka oka mutule e misile. Ka ofo wala ka efe to mutule e mole fan. Yeah, no fan te ame te ole gari ngo. Yeah, no 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 wasi mo no oka mutule e misile. Leke hunu no lutu mo no ochu mo ewo. Ka efe ani. So what he says is that we add the palm oil to it and we want the palm oil to be mixed very well with the gari so that it gets a nice golden reddish color and when we add the water to it it says for gari we will wet the gari soak it a little so when we add the water it's, it looks very evenly spread and that's very important and he says the reason we use the palm oils because they're on the sea a lot and what's not there in the sun it's very easy to get a fever develop a fever when you're out in these parts when you're working as a fisherman so the palm oil is good for them it helps um, you know it's very nutritious it also helps with the eyesight and what's not so there's a reason and a science behind this <laughs> So now they're removing the fish from the water and they're going to add a little bit of the water, that claw water, that's the water from the fish that they've boiled, also to the gari and the palm oil mixture. Before then, they're pouring a little of the fresh water, the clean water, into the gari so that it can have a nice uh, texture to it. It should be soft, it should be moist. So now we're pouring the claw water onto the gari and the muchu. And you see they're pouring the cold water at the same time. They're pouring the claw water as well, the hot boiling water from the fish that's been cooking on the coal pot all this while. And now we're mixing everything together. We're mixing everything together. So we've got gari in there, we've got palm oil in there, we've got a bit of cold water, fresh water in there and again don't, don't forget and of course if you just joined us if they had been on sea what would have happened is they would have taken some of the fresh sea water which already has salt it has its own set of nutrients and we're told it's very very clean when you're out in the deep blue sea they take some of that water and use it to make the fish but since they don't have that they've gone to fetch some fresh water we're here on land we're at the shore we're at the Shona, and then they are pouring some of the water from the boiling fish from that claw into the gari mixture with the palm oil. He also says that when you use the water from that claw, from the fish, it also gives a bit of flavor to the gari and to the, you know, the, the gari and palm oil mixture as well. So when you add that together with the fish and the, the salted pepper that we, we saw being grinded earlier, you chew it with the fresh onions. It's a taste quite like none other. So you notice that they're using a wooden spoon to stir it because they want it to be even. And the water, both the hot water from that, from that claw, from the fish, that's just been boiled to perfection and the fresh water it's given the gari a very soft consistency so it almost looks like they're making a ba or any of our swallows be it banku or any of the aklens or whatever it is and now he's molding in nicely just tidying up the bowl as well so our claw our fish is almost ready Rao is shaking it's a chicken 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 
Okay, we're fanning our fire just to make sure it's a few now. Okay, so we're fanning and he said it's just left with a bit and it will be ready. Pepper is ready, well grounded, very smooth. We've seen that already. Onions have been sliced and diced into it, ready for action. So let's go for a break and when we come back, it's time to eat. Eat or oh, eat our claw. City TV is live on DSTV. Go to channel 363. On Go TV, access City TV on channel 182. On a digital TV, please press the menu button on the remote control and run a new search on your TV. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV on your television. City TV can be accessed on a free to air digital box like the Go TV and Star Times box. City TV, it's your world. Welcome back, it's Still What's Cooking, right here on City TV. My name, of course, is Apioko. And now we've been making some akula here at the shore, at the, the seashore. Okay, and it's time to eat now. But before then, let's have a short conversation with Brock. You see, he's been the, the chef, the cook on the ground, the chef, eh? Yeah, be. So, Brock, you see, what are you doing? 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 Ni okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, if you tell on Ashika. Because now ne manke. Twelve AM, one AM, yeah sure. Ewa ba ten AM or eleven. It will take ni ashika ten. Ah, it should be ni if you want to learn by the season by season. If I should be ni court here, you are not saying well now you find to have a what you have to put me here. Well now to you to you know what to do alpha. Okay. okay, so I'm asking him what kind of fish is in here. And he's mentioned the names from Odoe to Sama. I mean, different, different ones. And he says that these are not the only ones that they catch. Hey, what's cooking? What's cooking? What's cooking? What's <laughs> cooking? Wow. This looks more like Galingo. Yeah, 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 yeah Galingo. Galingo. Yes. You know, I'm an expert in the okay. hey, food. I was wondering why the GPS took me into the sea. <laughs> I was wondering, <laughs> but not knowing this is more. So like you a followed me to the No, no, no. Like, I, I thought I was going for a beach ride, but uh, it's a uh, Inshona music. Oh, fine. Eh, here on Masse. You can feel cat in honey. Cat a honey fair. Now you are buying knee. A rubber. A warm in that. Eh, Ben. In our share. Should I jump in or I can stand by here? Yeah, I will move for you. Okay. By the side is also good. By the side. It's also good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. 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 No, 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 no. Okay. 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 We use our hands to eat. Ah. Uh -huh. Okay. Maybe if you both tie, oh no. Nah. We don't use <laughs> fork and knife to eat here. <laughs> okay, let me arrange my accoutrement. Even All me, right. who is supposed to be bougie, yeah. I know that. No, no, because uh, the international standard of tasting sometimes is with a. Uh, so you're a professional taster. Thank you. When I want to the taster general. Hmm. Eh, who ni? She leva her max. 
so I was saying that Rock, you see here, was telling us about the different fish that's here, the different kinds that they catch. Mm -hmm. And I was asking him how they make money because every day, apart from but Tuesday, then, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so they don't go fishing on Tuesdays. on Tuesday. So, uh, I mean, it's sacred. It's kusum, or, uh, you know, um, it's tradition, should I say. Mm -hmm. we've, we've got deities in the sea. You have to pay them homage, pay them respect. And so on Tuesdays, the Ulama, we don't allow them to go fishing here at Gamashi. But every other day, they're on the sea. And so I was asking how they make money, because if they're leaving at 12 a.m., 1 a.m., and then they come back here, how are they making money? So he says, oh, it's, it's in seasons. I mean, they do make some catches. They will sell every now and then. I mean, they do their best. Sometimes, mm. other times, mm. but they also fish to eat for sustenance. So when they go, they bring some back. They mm. cook the fish eat at home with their families and what's not. So this is the life of the fisherman, the gang fisherman here as Gamashi. And that's what we've been talking about so far. Do you but have any questions? I believe, I believe uh, it's only gangs who have fishermen here, right? Yeah. Because the people along the coast, people along the coast, people the coast, people along the coast, people the coast, people along the coast, people the coast, Aha. <laughs> 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 and then Okay. Yes. So we're asking him, I mean, because his name is Parkwisi, and as Tessa General, today the Tessa General has helped in the conversation. He didn't just come to eat keke. Yeah, yeah. Tessa General asked a question, uh, is it just guys who are here? But so even when you hear our brother's name, Parkwisi, it's a fancy name, at least that's what we hear, what we know. And he says, yes, that he's actually a fancy. But his father was a soldier and was transferred here to Accra, was here for so many years, and then ended up doing some of the fishing work from time to time. And he was born into it. And he went to school for some time, finished JSS Una. Yeah. Danny, before he himself also started buying the tree. So I'm gonna which one there of failure how many years? I feel in you. Oh yeah, Mitch. I guess it's more getting to twenty years. It's twenty years. So he's been fishing for about twenty years now. Been fishing for about twenty years now. Okay, so Ket Netin Sean. Hey, Tessa General. I have to sit. In a way I have to sit. I have to find a way to sit. No but more day. I have to talk. <laughs> yes. So um, let, let's talk about Ket Nyente Nshon By all means, Oana challenges Yeah, sure 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 Yeah, well, she will be busu. I mean, from Bawa. Well, she won't wear a jam one name or wash it. I mean, we. If I ever feel to me, I will wash it. No, she will. Yeah. Will busu. She will. Busu will. She did shark. Yeah, she will. Shark. Shark. Oh, I'm on. She will be nicker. You too. Oh, yeah. I'm not mean. I'm a farmer. Farmer. I'm a farmer. Hey. You watch it. 
So I'm asking what kinds of challenges or interesting things they face on sea. He says that when it gets to around August, yeah. the sea becomes a little cold. Cool, cool, yeah, yes. Cool. And then the whales, bolsu, that's what we call whale, they come out and they, they are used to them because they've been doing this work for a long time. So they are not scared. They come around the boats, they even, you know, so we got to make sure, you know, once in a while, they see them. Eh. No, I can't even say, Jen, what can I make sure? Ah, okay. So he says that when they come, they you know stamp, they do something so that they go away. But they are not scared of them, really. They are not. They are used to it, even though they are big. And then sometimes sharks come, and the sharks ask for them. When they catch the fish, they even want to pull the fish from the nets. They tear their nets sometimes, and all that. So those are some of the the things that they encounter at sea. They won't come so he says that sometimes they've done a good catch and then the sharks come before they realize they've held on to the nets, held on to the fish, pulled everything. You know sharks are of course very um, aggressive that's the word we should use for them I'm an hour <laughs> so they will fight with them and then their catch is ruined so those are some of the difficulties they face at sea Lelem, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, oh. I see. So I, I was asking him, I said, I, the uh, Lele is canoe. So the canoes, the boats, the vessels that we're sitting in one of today, they're made of wood. But we see that there's something that we call Kufor gallons. So the yellow gallons that we fetch water in. In many parts of the country, when there's no water, you fill those gallons. Some people call them jelly cans. There's oil is sold in them, vegetable oil in large quantities and what's not. So, so I've seen that a lot of those gallons have been cut into pieces and some of them have been put on the side of the canoe, just at the side like this. So I was asking yeah. him why that is the case. And he says, look, when they are pulling the canoes in, and you've seen the them net. doing that earlier yeah. today, and the net as well, if you're not careful, you can actually end up breaking the wood of the of the canoe mm -hmm. Jena Kai. Yeah. because the ropes, yeah, the ropes yes can the ropes cut can cut the, yeah. the the wood because it's it's not as strong and they are pushing a lot of force into it when they are doing the pulling so they put the plastic there from the gallon so that it protects the wood and it can pass it the ropes through the plastic and it saves the wood Okay. Mm -hmm. So I was asking him, has there ever been a situation where the water enters the canoe or the boat while they're at sea? He says no, he hasn't experienced that before in over 20 years. But if it's raining, then definitely water will enter the boat. Well, kept in Sean ni no more, but how do you? If you have a you or use a rubber. Okay, how are you? We use Okay. Uh -huh. no. Okay. Okay, you will. May rubber no use Oh, what I feel, um, black rubber can do. Uh, okay. Agbo. Agbo feel. Uh, Tapoli. 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 Okay, so I was asking him how they protect themselves when it starts raining. He says, oh, sometimes they cover themselves with raincoats or very big black polythene or plastic, like what's 
uh, Tesa General is calling Tapuli. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with how landscaping is done, usually put these huge plastic uh, sheets, black sheets or white sheets on the ground before you add the sand and the stones. You have some, some pictures of that on the screen. They usually have them with them. So if it starts raining, they cover themselves for protection. For protection, and then they put on their yeah 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 light on it. You want light in the usual torch light. Torch light. Well, echo I'm sure the from Paris to red, green, blue. Okay. Okay. You want to pull any young way? No, okay. Sheep kumba in that any high fashion. Okay. So he says that the aversion of a hazard light at sea, um, a beacon. They have these torch lights. Some of them have different colors: red, okay, blue. So they hang it on the poles of the of the canoe, the lele, the canoe, so that when it's raining and it's cloudy, if a ship is coming or anyone at sea is there, they can see them and they will not come to harm. They will all find it. I'm gonna wait because I guess she tastes like a meal. I guess she will eat it. She can't even know it. The morning, oil phone tra. It's a it's a big thing. I'm a home bar. Oh, <laughs> 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 Okay. Okay. So we're asking him the wind when they are sea, does it bother them in any way? So he says no, because I was wondering, even if they are cooking the alcohol, there's a fire go off. He said no, 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 it's normal, just like how we are at shore. And he says he actually puts the coal pots right on top of these beams, like we've seen today. And in the middle of the sea, further out at sea, it's very smooth. It's not turbulent the way it is getting closer to the shore where you're, you're, you're swinging this way and that way, so they don't have any problems. So I'm washing my hands. Can I also? So he's calling some of the, the other members. So what he did was he poured a little bit of the water from that claw, from the fish, the bald fish, into the pepper. That's how it's done. He poured a little bit of the water from the fish, from that claw, into the pepper. That's how it's done. And then now you're arranging the fish, bringing it out. I kind of know. He's calling everyone. No, no, no. Says the food is ready. Everybody should come so that we can eat. <laughs> so this is how it's done 
it, we eat communally here at the mm. uh, show. Uh, the food has been prepared. Mm. The no, call no, is ready. No, we are all eating. So this is how it's done at the Shona. We eat together. It's a communal meal. Shona music. Shona music. Yes. So we're eating the clock. Then you're acting like bad boy. Whoa, what are you saying? Okay, cafe. Why not? She talk her clock. Can buy a banku. Okay. Okay. So he says that sometimes they make banku from home or their wives or they themselves, whoever, they'll prepare the banku and then carry it to sea with them. So then in that case, when the, alcohol, the fish is ready, then they grind the pepper, chop the onions into it, just as we saw today, and then... Well, Rao Chris, you'll find it. Come on one more time. Money are fuel, our claw. So just to go through the process one more time. When they are at sea, and this is usually done on the sea while they are still on their way back. Let's not forget this because by the time they get back, the food is ready. They dock the, the canoes, the lele, they can relax and then they eat. Okay, so they take some of their catch, they clean the fish, cut it, put it in some of the sea water. And it already has salt in it. Of course, sea water is salt water, so they won't need salt. Once we did it on the on the seashore at the beach, we had to use some salt. Some madang, the crystal salt, the rock salt. So that's what we use. But usually they'll use the sea water. They boil the fish on a coal pot with charcoal, and then they have their matches there that they light and everything. Then, while that is boiling, they grind the pepper, starts grinding the red pepper. Today we use the dry akule wabi, yeah. dry chili peppers. You've seen them. But Kwesi says sometimes but I need to use fresh pepper. Well, use of, uh, I use the fresh peppers as well. Fresh cayenne pepper, uh, the, the scotch bonnets, uh, whatever it is. You can use aquaposhito. I'm a use of uh, but today we use the dry akule wabi. The one we used to make shito, the black pepper sauce that we all know and love. So we grinded that. Actually it soaked the pepper in a little bit of water. So it could become soft enough no, to yeah, grind. And he says no, it's yeah, easier yeah. to carry the dry peppers along to sea. So that's why they use that a lot. Then they chop some of the onions into the, the pepper and they use that to grind as well. Yeah, that to the tapoli in the camp or the asanka uh, or the apotoyua or the agba, whatever you call it. So grinded everything together and then we slice some of the onions. <laughs> on top of the pepper now we went to the gary pour the gary in a big bowl pour water on it clean water potable water on it um, in fact before that they mix the gary with nutri red oil palm oil and then they pour the water and if you notice what they did was they poured some of the water from the fish from that claw at the same time, they are pouring cold water or room temperature water so that it doesn't become sticky like how a bar or pignon would be. Okay, we want it to be wet and moist but not sticky like a bar or pignon. Okay, that, that, that's also another gari meal that we eat. So when that's done, mix all of that together, add a little bit of salt as well, mix everything together. And then the food is ready. And to top it all off, Pour a little bit of the water from that claw from the fish into the, the pepper. pepper, and that's the, the, the deal breaker. That's what makes it nice. So, we're almost done here. Taste a general. Yeah. Yeah. So, once again, this has been another wonderful episode of What's Cooking Here. And look, we've been eating our claw, making our claw here in the heritage month of March right here 
on City TV. There's also a lot going on on City FM. Don't forget to tune in there as well to listen to our on air series. And of course, look out for our Back to Your Village Food Bazaar on the 26th and 27th of March. The Heritage Caravan is over, but you can still find all the images, all the footage that went of what went down on the caravan where you go to our social media handles and of course to our website as well. But here from the Jamestown Gamashi in Shona, the seaside, with my brothers, the fishermen, we are done. What's cooking? What's cooking? <laughs> <laughs> Bye -bye.